Hi, um, today is May 17th, um, and this video is a little bit crooked. Just hold on for a second. Okay. Okay, so welcome to Counting Wisdom. Um, and today is going to be a scripture reading, and um, this is sort of an informal show. Um, it, it's formal, it's a little bit more professional than my other videos. But um, it's still kind of a, a sort of a, a lowly Jesus way of approaching somebody. So uh, we're, today is going to be a scripture reading. Um, and I was just reading in Romans uh, 5. And we're going to start at verse 3. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges that tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. An alert expect ex expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary, we can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours and to our lives through the Holy Spirit. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for, and we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatever for of no use whatever to him. Now that we are set right with God by means of this sacrificial death, the consummate blood sacrifice, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. And excuse me, the camera is a little bit crooked still. Let me just. Okay. Sorry about that. If when we were. At our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God by the sacrificial death of his son. Now that we're at our best, just think of how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plodding prose. We sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus, the Messiah. You know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we're in. First sin, then death, and no one exempt from either sin or death. That sin disturbed relations with God and everything and everyone, but the extent of the disturbance was not clear until God spelled it out in detail to Moses. So death, this huge abyss separating us from God, dominated the landscape from Adam to Moses. Even those who didn't sin precisely as Adam did by disobeying a specific command of God still had to experience the termination of life, this separation from God. But Adam, who got us into this, also points ahead to the one who will get us out of it. Yet, the rescuing gift is not exactly parallel to the death-dealing sin. If one man's sin put crowds of people at the dead-end abyss of separation from God, just think what God's gift poured through one man, Jesus Christ, will do. There's no compassion, oh, excuse me, there's no comparison between that death-dealing sin and this generous life-giving gift. The verdict on that one sin was the death sentence. The verdict of the man, the many sins that followed was the wonderful life sentence. 
If death got the upper hand through one man's wrongdoing, can you imagine the breathtaking recovery life makes? Sovereign life and those who grasp with both hands this widely extravagant life gift, this grand setting everything right that one man, Jesus Christ, provides. Here it is in a nutshell. Just as one person did it wrong and got us in all this trouble with sin and death, another person did it right and got us out of it. I hope that helps uh, and I hope that blesses uh, somebody. Um, and yes, Jesus is continually working this world and making it right. So God bless you and thanks for watching.